Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namaste So these chapters three and four of the Vidyeshwara Sanghita are really the core of the philosophy behind Shiva Purana. Now, Shiva Purana deals with bhakti, jnana, and vairagya, devotion, self-realization of consciousness, and detachment. These are the three essential attributes that every holy person possesses. And one should strive in one's life to cultivate these things because these lead, <laughs> let me tell you by experience, I know, these lead to real satisfaction in life. I'm 75 years old and I'm happier than I've ever been in my whole life. So I hope that comes through in the videos uh, because this is not some kind of a formal presentation. You know, I'm not lecturing you, <laughs> I hope. I'm sharing my experience. And that's been my principle from the very beginning of this channel. That we're not just talking about theory, what to speak of dogma or doctrine. Uh, this is an experience, this is a journey. And I'm sharing my experiences on this journey as I progress in spiritual life myself. I'm not saying that I have the ultimate knowledge. Maybe I do. <laughs> but even so, the purpose here is to share it in a way that you can assimilate and benefit from. So bhakti or devotion is the foundation of everything in spiritual life. And if it's cultivated over a significant period of time, I mean decades or basically your whole life, it leads to advancement in jnana. Jnana means direct perception or self-realization of Brahman, which is pure consciousness. So this naturally leads to great happiness because Consciousness, or Brahman, is sat -chit ananda eternal, cognizant, or sentient, and full of bliss. Because there's no suffering in it. Huh? Suffering comes from chasing material desires. So the more desires that you hold, the more that you chase after these things in the material world, the more you suffer. Take it from me. I've been down all roads. I've tried everything in my life. I was a professional musician. That was my first career. And I mean, I've been to parties like you wouldn't believe with Grateful Dead and Janis Joplin and Quicksilver Messenger Service. I mean, they were all my friends neighbors living in the same area in California. I've been to parties that, well, I actually don't remember. <laughs> it was so crazy. Somebody asked me the other day, what would you be doing now if you weren't a yogi? And I said, oh, I'd be dead. There's no question in my mind. I wouldn't have survived the 80s. So by the grace of God, my Guru Maharaj rescued me, initiated me, taught me all the devotional arts, and I spent more than 20 years serving him in various capacities all over the world. And I continued to build on that experience as I learned more and more about different traditions and methods and have experienced different paths that bhakti leads to jnana. 
And it also leads to vairagya because you're not any more dependent on material things, chasing material desires to attain happiness. That first of all, it doesn't really give happiness. If, if it does, it's only very temporary. And then to get that same happiness again, you have to do more and more. It becomes an addiction. So really the best course in life is to let go of material desire and focus all your efforts on bhakti because that will lead to happiness. Now, what are the three methods of bhakti? Shravanam, kirtanam, and mananam. Shravanam means hearing, not just from anybody, but from the realized souls. If you're fortunate, you get to hear directly. Or if you're still fortunate, but not quite as fortunate, <laughs> you get to hear through books or other media. But the whole point is to get in contact with the truth as revealed in the Vedic scriptures. Once you know that truth, that guides you. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. This is also my experience, <laughs> that by making these videos and going over this material, I have to organize my thoughts. I have to contemplate everything and be really clear about what I'm trying to say. Otherwise, it comes out all jumbled. So, kirtana means sharing the knowledge, repeating the knowledge, and manana means contemplation of the knowledge that one hears by shravana. So they all work together. These three methods are uh, synergistic. They go together to make a very powerful engagement of the senses and mind. By hearing, one engages the ears. By speaking, one engages the tongue. And by contemplation, one engages the mind. So these are the three most important senses because they really determine how we view the world and how we think about things, our aspiring desires and our actions, our priorities, our views. I mean, it's just so basic and fundamental. So I encourage you very much to hear from the Vedic scriptures. Hear this uh, video series or podcast. Uh, there's a link in the video description if you want to hear this as a podcast. And follow the other Vedic scriptures, Vedanta Sutra, the Upanishads, the other Puranas, although the other Puranas are a little bit confusing because they sometimes mention other deities as the supreme besides Shiva. But as we discover in the, this chapter and the next chapter, that Shiva is really the only form of the Supreme Brahman. All others are Jivas. They may be very highly empowered, but they're still Jivas. They're not Brahman. Only Shiva is Brahman. Only Shiva is the Supreme. And when I say Shiva, that also includes Shakti because Shiva and Shakti are not two. They only appear to be two. They're actually one in their essence. So there's a lot more that I could say, but really trying to keep it simple, trying to keep it digestible, and trying to keep it focused. You need to hear. If you hear nicely, you'll automatically speak nicely. And if you speak and hear about these wonderful subject matters, you can't help but think about it day and night. You can't help but be fascinated or even obsessed by it. <laughs> That's a good kind of obsession. That's a good kind of addiction. To be addicted to truth and to be obsessed with the purity of transcendental sound I mean, this is the actual method of salvation. This is what leads to Shiva's realm. 
This is what automatically bestows moksha and mukti, as we talked about in another video series on that subject. So please stay with us, continue to listen, not only to these spiritual insight videos. I notice these get a lot more views than the actual narrations of the Shiva Purana. That's not right. You should be listening to the Purana directly. Then you know the context that these discussions refer to. And you'll much more quickly get the desired result, which is complete enlightenment and liberation from material existence. <laughs> Om Tat Sat. Om Shakti Om. Om Namah Shivaya.